Hey, it's your open source advocate, and every week I bring you new open source, self-hosted software that is absolutely amazing. I hope you'll like, subscribe, and tell your friends about this channel so they can come along on the journey with us. Now let's get started. It's your open source advocate, and I'm back with another video. So I want to talk about a few really great tools, especially when you're talking about running a Nix system, Linux, Unix. These are some really great tools that you can use. Now, a couple of them you can use on Mac OS as well. Today I want to talk about these things for, for those of you that are sysadmins. Um, really, they're terminal and shell-based tools anyways, so <clears throat> this is really more towards those that would be running a Linux server or maybe a, U a Unix server. Um, when you run these servers and a lot of the stuff that I've shown you in past videos, you know, how to set these things up, I've shown you uh, several different things. Inmon, um, you know, several different things for, for checking how well things are running. So um, there's other videos that I have that are really great for finding these things out. But I want to talk about a few really simple tools that you can get installed and, and up and running pretty quickly today. So the first one is HTOP. So if you've ever used the top command, um, which I've, I've kind of shown in the past, if we bring up our terminal here, if you just type top, basically on any Linux or Unix system, you're, you're going to get this. And what it's doing is showing you basically the top processes. Um, so if you're a Windows kind of person, the, the, the Windows services, I guess you'd say, um, in this case, they're called processes that are using up, you know, whatever CPU and RAM and things like that. So it kind of moves those things to the top and it shows you however many it can on the screen here. And then up here at the top of the actual screen, it gives you some other information. So it gives you some bandwidth usage and some, some uh, memory usage and things like that. So top is a really, really good, easy um, thing to grab and look at on your system to kind of check things out. Um, so not really going much into the depth of top today, but um, you know, right here you've got RAM and swap. So you can kind of see what's going on with your RAM usage and your swap, how much you've got free, that kind of stuff. And then CPU and things like that are shown down here, of course. And just, just some nice, really quick information for a sysadmin to kind of look at and say, okay, what's going on? Maybe my system's running slow. Maybe my network's running slow. So maybe that's your question. There's a couple of other tools that we'll look at that will kind of show you those things. Um, so I just use the Q letter, the, the letter Q, to get out of that once I've uh, finished looking at it. Um, and then you can just use clear to clear the screen. So the other one we want to try is HTOP. So the way you install is it's not installed by default most of the time, so you may have to install it. And on, on a Debian-based uh, systems like Ubuntu, Debian, Mint, um, just so many, so many of them out there are based off of Debian in the first place. You're going to do sudo apt install htop. It's, it's that simple. Now you can do dash y if you don't want to be prompted for whenever it does the install. And I've already got it, but if you do that, it's going to prompt you, of course, for your user password. If you're logged in as root, you don't have to do the sudo part, and it'll just install it anyways. Um, but there we go. So now HTOP is installed. Uh, I may have updated it, I think. I don't think it really did any, any install. Well, it may have installed it. Maybe I didn't have it. So now that I've installed it, um, now if you're, oh, by the way, if you're using Arch, um, AUR, you know, always check the AUR for anything if it doesn't, if it's not in the regular package manager. Um, HTOP, I would imagine, is probably in the regular package manager for Arch. Um, <clears throat> same way with uh, Fedora, Red Hat, base systems, just use your yum install instead of apt install to, to install them. HTOP is super common, so it's, it's just going to be yum install HTOP, uh, DNF install HTOP, you know, whatever, whatever your package manager is of choice, that's, it's going to be that thing, install HTOP most likely. So once you've got it, you just type HTOP. And again, you get this nice, um, really simple to use, really easy to see screen. And, you know, just working from the top down, you can kind of see all of the things that are here and included for you. So up here, you've got your, your different uh, processing cores. So, so however many cores you have, it shows you what those are, one, two, three, and four. And it shows you how busy they are in the percentage, but also in a nice little line graph here. Um, your memory usage, uh, you know, however much RAM you're using, it shows you kind of here. So in this case, I'm using five gigs out of my 16 or, you know, 15.6 gigs. So we've got swap, and I'm using three megabytes out of the two gigabytes that I've got. I almost don't use any swap when you have an SSD. It, it doesn't. It's not really necessary. It's really all like it's kind of RAM. But you can see the number of tasks that are running on the system, and then you can see your load average on the system, and then your uptime. So my machine's been up for six days, uh, 23 hours, and you can see so so how many days, minutes, and seconds, and it just keeps a running tally basically of how long the machine's been up and running. So down here, it's very similar to top. So you can see the processes that are running, where those processes are located, 
and then how much they're using up of your actual CPU. And, and up here at the top, you can see the different uh, headers that tell you what each column is. So here's your memory header. Um, so you can kind of see basically in the columns what's going on and, and what's being used and, and how it's being measured. Um, so as you go down to the bottom, you'll see that you have these different hotkeys that you can take actions with inside of HTOP. So if you wanted to go to setup, you would use the F2 key on your keyboard. That's an actual separate key. It's not the F key and the 2 key. It's the F2 up along the very top row there. But if you hit F2, you'll see you get the setup menu. So inside of setup, you can go into your display options. And then basically I'm using the arrow key to move up and down through the menu. So as I move through the first menu, you can see that the other menus change based on that uh, context. You can move left and right just by using the left and right arrow keys. So let's go down to this menu for display options. I'm going to move right and you can see now I'm moving through that menu with the up down arrow keys. And if I want to change something, I press the space bar when it's highlighted. So if I hit the space bar, it puts an X in there. If I hit it again, it takes the X away. So tree view just says that it's going to group things up in, in tree views that belong with each other. So that may be useful for you to see. It may clutter things up. So you may want to turn it back off after you're done using it. It just depends. Um, down here is highlight program, uh, you know, basically the base name of the program. So you can uh, hit an X on that to make it stand out a little bit. Uh, just hit the space bar and the X gets put in there. So, so you've got a few different options here in the display options. Then you just hit the, the left arrow to go back to the other menu. And then here you can go to colors and you can kind of change up the color schemes if you want. I just leave it on default, it looks fine. Um, and then columns. So if you wanna see certain things in, in certain columns, you can do that. You can add things to the columns that you may not have. So here's a list of available columns. So you can just arrow down through this. And if you want something in a column, you would hit the space bar to move it over. If you want something out of the columns that you're seeing, you can just hit the space bar to move it out. So you don't have to have the same columns. You can really kind of customize this to the way that you want it. That's one of the really cool things about HTOP. So when you're done, you just hit escape and you come back to this main view that you were on and you can see the changes that we made. So you can see the tree over here on the right, uh, basically that it created for the processes that are running there. So it does create this tree view so you can kind of see what's going on. Now you see it's not jumping around as much because I put it into that tree view. So that's not helping me a lot. I'm just seeing really what's under that specific process. So I can go back into F2 and I can go back into my display options and I can just highlight that, hit the space bar and then hit escape. And now my tree view is gone and I'll see things moving around again because I'm not expanding those things out as much. So it just depends on what you're looking for as to what you're gonna want in those options. So if you look at F3, there's search. And you'll notice that down here now I've got this little search box. So I can start typing and I'm going to try to search for Docker and you'll notice as I search it starts looking for different things that have the word doc in it. So it found uh, any desk and it's a service that it's got that it's kind of running. It's got container D which is part of Docker. So it finds the things that, that seem to make sense for what you're looking for. So if I look for node, you see it highlights what I have here for node. So as you, as you backspace out, then it goes back to the top with the highlighting. So search is pretty cool. Again, um, hit escape to cancel. Uh, F4 will show you a filter. So search so searches for things in the list. F4 should filter the list. So if we hit F4, now we can filter. And if I do node, you see it starts taking things out of the list for us. Um, if I go back and I do Docker, you see it keeps filtering that list. If I go to um, let's do key base. So it starts filtering down to the key base items that we have in the list here that are running. So you can see what happens when you do filtering. It's a little bit different from search. If I hit escape, I get back out of filter and then F6 will let you do sorting. So if you hit F6, now we could pick our sort orders, things like that. Um, so over here on the left, basically you can say, I want to sort by memory usage, or I want to sort by priority, or I want you know different ways to sort the columns so that you can kind of get the things to the top that you may be interested in. Again, hit escape. F9, now this is an important one. You want to be really careful with F9 because that will kill a process. So basically, a lot of times in the terminal, you can type in kill-9 and then a process ID which is this thing, 
and tell it, you know, I need to kill that thing. So maybe VLC gets stuck open for some reason on your Linux system, or maybe you have a process that's just dog stuck and eating up all your CPU and RAM and you want to kill it, you would type that in. In this case, you can just highlight it and hit F9 and it will kill that process or it will attempt to kill that process. And then F10 will quit, but you can also just use Q and it quits out of HTOP. So that's HTOP in a nutshell. It's a really, really nice tool. It's a great utility for doing some really great digging in to see what's going on in your Linux systems. It's extremely lightweight. It's got no size to it. So installing it on your servers and looking at it and using it takes nothing. Um, I highly recommend it. If you haven't looked at it before, if you haven't tried it, uh, give it a shot. All right, this next tool is a really great one. It's called VTOP, V like Victor. And it's a node uh, application, actually, but it comes up in the terminal whenever you run it. So you can run this on Mac OS or on Linux. Um, and the way that you need to install it is, of course, you first have to have node and NPM. So we're going to bring up our terminal. Um, I'll scroll this up so you can kind of see what it's going to look like when we get it installed and kind of the controls you have. So bring up your terminal, and you see I just was running HTOP. We'll just clear that out. And we're going to do... First, you can just do node-v and see if you have node installed, which I do. You can also do npm-v, which I do. You want to make sure you have these installed. If you don't, though, here's how you would install them. sudo apt install node.js. This is going to install node.js. Now, out of the normal repos for Ubuntu and Debian, you're going to get an older version of Node than what I had. I had a, I had a version 14. This is going to get you, depending on the version of Ubuntu that you're on, and I'm on 1804 here, um, this is going to get you uh, an 8.x version of Node.js, which is getting pretty old, uh, several years old anyways. Um, it still works, and it'll run VTOP just fine. I've done this on another machine. Uh, and then individually or separately you'll have to install npm so you'd also do sudo apt install npm once you do those two uh, commands and run them and let them install then you're going to get uh, node dash v and you'll see a version now your version will be again version 8 dot something and npm dash v now here i've got version 6 uh, your version is going to be 3.5 i think or somewhere in there so again a little bit older version but it's going to run these things perfectly well there's no reason to go beyond uh, those versions in this case in fact having these newer versions of these things may cause problems when I install VTOP but we're gonna find out so we're gonna clear this out so we're gonna type npm install VTOP dash G okay now that we've got that installed we're just gonna run the VTOP command and right away you see VTOP comes up and we start getting output. So the VTOP window is pretty nice. Um, again, this is running in my terminal, so you can run this in an SSH session. It, it doesn't have to be specifically run on the machine that you're on. I'm just running it on my local machine since it's Linux anyways. But right out of the gate, you can see my CPU usage. And now I'm recording the screen, so it's a little higher than it would be normally if it was just sitting idle. Uh, down here you can see memory usage, which is pretty flat right now. We're not seeing a lot of fluctuations in memory just because not really doing anything um, but over here on the right you can see that there's some items where you have basically a list of commands or a process list that, that you can sort through so over at the right you can see we've got processes uh, our process list basically down here at the bottom we've got commands that are highlighted for different keys so DD is gonna kill a process if you do that so you highlight a process to kill it J and K are gonna move up and down in the process list G is going to go to the top of the process list, or small g. A capital G will go to the bottom of the process list. C will sort CPU, so by CPU usage. And M will sort by memory usage. So you've got a few options here. So if we use J, we can move down through the list, and then K, we can move back up to the list. So J and K. So this is very much like a Vim or VI, if you've used those editors before. You use these keys for those same things when you're not in insert mode. So we can move up and down here, and we can look at the different processes that are running. And it's kind of grouped these things by uh, more like what I would call uh, programs and not just the process itself, which is kind of a nice, clean view that you don't always get when you're running something like top or HTOP, as you saw a while ago. So I kind of like this view. Now, let's say I want to jump to the bottom. I'm going to do capital G. I jump to the bottom of the list. And if I do just little g... I jump back to the top of the list so I can move through the list and then I can jump around in the list. 
Now for C, I can sort by CPU usage, which I think it's already sorted that way, but for M, I can switch it to sorting by memory usage. So here we see that web content, which I think is VTOP, is, is using the most, and then we've got Keybase, Gnome Shell, which is our desktop environment, Firefox, which uses up quite a bit of uh, RAM, but not as much as it used to for sure. It's much more lean now. And you can see things change as it gets updated. And then I can switch back to the CPU um, version so we can see here what's going on. So my screen recorder and then Node, of course, has taken up some CPU to run VTOP. And then we've got everything else that's, that's working down here. So this is a really nice, simple, easy way to look at things that are happening on your system and get kind of a quick read of what's going on. And I kind of like this. And you could open up multiple terminals and run this at the same time as HTOP and at the same time as some of the other tools that I've shown you in the past or one of the tools I'm about to show you here in a minute. So in a nutshell, that's VTOP. It's very easy to get installed, and it's really great once you get it running because it gives you some really quick, fast at a glance information. To get out of it, you're just going to use the Q to quit, and we clear. Now we're done. And the last tool that I want to talk about is called GTOP. So George, G like George, top. So or Gordon, if you want to put it that way. Um, so this is another nice little tool that's basically that's node based so you've already installed node and npm if you installed vtop so now you just have to go and set up gtop and you can do some pretty cool stuff with gtop as well so we're going to do the same command so we're going to go back and we're going to say npm install gtop and then we're going to say hyphen g like george as in global we're going to let that run And now it's done. Now we can run the GTOP command. And right away we get the GTOP interface and you'll see it start filling things in as it gets any kind of information to provide. So here we can see up at the top we've got our CPU and memory information. Here we've got memory and swap history. So you can kind of see a history of how memory and swap might be getting used. Over on the right, we've got memory in kind of a graphical form with a 36% and a percentage, and then swap is showing 0%, so there's no swap being used, so there's no history here right now. Um, swap would come up as a slightly different colored line to kind of show you usage if it was getting used. As we move down, we get this network history as well, so you can see what kind of speed you're getting on your network and what's being used up on your network. So I've got the slightest bit of network traffic, but almost nothing going on. And then down here, disk usage, so 63% is what we're looking at for disk usage, so I probably need to go through and cull some files and get rid of some things. And then down here on the bottom right, we've again got uh, different process information, what it's using for CPU and memory. Now I don't see any um, particular hotkeys listed for GTOP, so basically the view that you've got is the view that you get. But it's a really nice, simple view, and you can see what's going on with it, and it's a nice, simple tool that's pretty lightweight. Um, again, you can see that Node is, is using up 4% of the CPU, but that's really not much. I mean, to, to get something that's nice like this that's monitoring everything, um, just expect that you'll have a little bump in, in usage there from the Node process. But other than that, this is a really nice little tool. So that's three really great tools, HTOP, VTOP, and GTOP. I hope that you'll go out, get these, put them on your servers, put them on your systems, try them out, and see how they look. So I want to do one last thing to kind of show you what these can really do and how, how nice it can really be. So here I have an application called Terminator. It's just another shell emulator. But you can see in the upper left I've got HTOP running. In the lower left I've got VTOP running. And on the right I've got GTOP running. So basically this is just a terminal emulator that lets me split it into multiple panes. And in this case, I'm SSH'd into my server machine that runs out in my office, and I'm just monitoring what's going on on that machine. So it's really great to have these three tools all in a single window, broken out into multiple panes, and I can really see a lot of information about what's going on on my server and start finding places where I might want to dig in a little bit more if I was having performance issues. Uh, right now, everything's running really well on that server, so nothing to dig into. But this gives you an idea of what you can do with these tools.